One of the many reasons I love open source software is that every time I think I have seen the weirdest thing possible, I see a weirder thing. Heather thinks about software. I was delighted this week to see a message from the license review discussion list, which is where people analyze licenses that have been submitted for approval or rejection by the Open Source Initiative or OSI. This message recommended rejecting something called the adversary license. You can read the message yourself. I will put it in the description. This message says it recommends rejecting the adversary license, noting that the license is the MIT license with seven additional conditions that the license submitter refers to as the tenants from the temple of Satan. Well, not only did the submitter refer to them that way, they are indeed the tenants from the temple of Satan, or more accurately, the tenants of the Satanic Temple, or TST. You might expect such tenants to involve directives to crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentations of the women. Uh, alas, no. I always thought Satan was a bad guy, but it turns out I was misinformed. The tenants are pretty bland, to be honest, and more like what you would expect from the good guys. For example, one should strive to act with compassion and empathy toward all creatures in accordance with reason, which sounds suspiciously similar to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, which is from, you know, Jesus. In fact, the Satanic Temple has little to do with the Christian notion of Satan. It is a relatively new religious organization founded in 2012 and atheistic to combat the encroachment of Christian ideas in law and politics. Okay, whatever, I thought that was just the First Amendment. Instead of championing blood drinking, battles to the death, and orgiastic gatherings, it promotes rational thought and community service. Like all self-respecting religious groups, TST has experienced internal schisms. This resulted in the Global Order of Satan, the Coalition of Satanic Congregations, and Hell La in Los Angeles, which is at least creative. I mean, the others are so generic they probably couldn't even muster trademark protection. The Satanic Temple, sponsors After School Satan, an after-school program where students engage in rationalist pursuits, scientific games, nature activities, and community service. I'm sure the students who signed up for a club called After School Satan were disappointed with these activities, which sound a lot like the Girl Scouts. This image here is actually one from their website, which includes a video with a cringy rap song that says, don't deny a student their bathroom access or Satanist lawyers will sue your asses. I, I don't think anyone wants to sue my ass, by the way, because I don't think there would be bathroom access for my ass in court. The Satanic Temple has a campaign for abortion rights based on its tenet of bodily autonomy. There is a website that explains all this, which I will link in the comments. The website claims the Satanic Temple's religious abortion ritual exempts TST members from enduring medically unnecessary and unscientific regulations when seeking to terminate their pregnancy. Because prerequisite procedures such as waiting periods, mandatory viewing of sonograms, and compulsory counseling contravene Satanist religious convictions, those who perform the religious abortion ritual are exempt from these requirements and can receive first trimester abortions on demand in states that have enacted the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Well, that is clever. It is trying to establish a First Amendment exemption to the application of anti-abortion laws. Now, I'm just a software lawyer, but I'm pretty sure it won't work. You could claim it's against your religion to drive at the speed limit too, but that wouldn't work either. I mean, if you have the power of Satan at your disposal, why not just make the U.S. legislature pass a constitutional amendment protecting the right to abortion 
and resolving the question once and for all. Surely Satan could do that, even if our elected representatives can't. The adversary license was submitted by Omega Allison, apparently the nom de plume of a self-described open sorcerer with some street cred on GitHub, but based on the license only modest license drafting skills. His GitHub and LinkedIn profiles suggest he is more like a regular programmer dude than a creature of evil. I wasn't sure at first why this license was called the adversary license, but Wikipedia informs me that Satan is the word for adversary in Hebrew. Now, I would think that it would have been better to call this the Satan license. Not only would that have been more evocative, it would have raised the possibility of the SPDX identifier Satan, which definitely would have improved my life, particularly during tedious sessions reviewing lists of licenses in software bill of materials. The OSI rejected the license for the same reason it rejects all so-called ethical licenses, which is that the open source definition does not allow any license restrictions at all, not even the JSON license, good not evil requirement. Apparently no open source projects actually use the adversary license at this time. Meanwhile, if you care to join TST, you can join on their website. Since I've teased them a little in this video, I will include the link in the description because I think that is acting in empathy in accordance with reason. If you join TST, you may be able to take advantage of one of their religious holidays, July 25th, Unveiling Day, celebrating a monumental bronze statue called Bahomet, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, an eight and a half foot tall, goat-headed, angel-winged occult figure which sounds like even more fun than Festivus. Liking and subscribing makes me think more. Heather thinks about software.